Promoting wellness in the library is a natural extension of our roles as librarians and the role of the library in the community. Librarians have an opportunity to be role models and to exhibit the importance of making time for daily healthy habits. In this presentation, we will discuss the ways in which we have included wellness programming at an academic law library. All school exams are associated with high stress and anxiety, so we take wellness and self-care opportunities seriously during these times of year in May and December. One of our events last December was far more successful than we even anticipated, and that was our peanut butter and jelly bar. We scheduled this event for the late afternoon the day before our first year students' first fall semester exam. We ran to Publix for supplies, which included all different types of bread, a variety of jam flavors, alternative nut butters to accommodate allergies, and we included some non pb and j snacks like hummus, pita, and bananas. Our faculty and staff lounge is home to some nice serving platters and silverware. So with those and some paper goods we picked up at Publix, we spread everything out buffet style in a high traffic area of the law school near the law library entrance. We plugged in some toasters and we coordinated with the law school's career development office who provided free coffee for students during exams so that the coffee station was set up right next to our PB&J bar. Near the buffet, we set up high top tables where students could stand, chat, and eat their creations. These tables were decorated with infographic centerpieces that offered mindfulness and self-care tips. This event was so well attended that we decided to buy a few more loaves of bread and use up our remaining nut butters and jellies the next day. While this particular event is difficult to replicate during the pandemic, we will definitely host it again in the future when we are able to do so safely. Since the bar exam is always held at the end of July when it's hot outside, our law library came up with a way to give our law students a cool treat while they study for the exam in the library. We call our event Pass the Ice Cream Bar and the students really enjoy the ice cream and the good wishes from all of us. We keep it very simple. Email the students with the dates, usually two or three days before they sit for the exam set up a table and hand out ice cream sandwiches, popsicles, push-ups, Klondike bars, orange creamsicles, and whatever else makes a fun treat. Whether you left the house and forgot something or need an outdoor break, the Alexander Campbell King Law Library wants to help. We lend out phone chargers, computer chargers, headphones, and even USB drives to save you from your technological challenges. Also, we lend frisbees, footballs, a bowling set for outside, and puzzles for inside. If the weather rains on your parade, we lend umbrellas too. Please swing by the front desk and let us help you out. The official definition of the word mindfulness is the ability to calmly acknowledge things as they really are while being truly aware of the present moment. However, I strongly suspect that it kind of means slightly different things to different people and manifests itself in various forms in our lives. Regardless of the way we choose to practice mindfulness, it provides the same great benefits to all of us. Greater sense of well-being, improved ability to remain task-focused, being better equipped to cope with stress, awareness of mental roadblocks, and a more cohesive team environment. Now, doesn't that sound marvelous and worthy to strive for? So embrace mindfulness and start practicing and also facilitating mindfulness activities in your own libraries. Organize some stress relieving activities, do a guided meditation, have a tea party, or roll out your yoga mats as a small group of us do on our lunch break and enjoy the gift of mindfulness that keeps on giving. Rachel Casper, Director of Strategic Operations and Marketing for the group Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers, stated that 96% of law students experience significant stress, compared to 70% of medical students and 43% of other graduate students. This number probably rises to 100% during exams. A few years ago, our law library came up with the idea of providing stress busters for our students during finals. We started with simply putting a jigsaw puzzle at the reference desk. We expanded this idea the next semester and put three puzzles in the reading room. Each semester afterwards, we added one more event or puzzle from which to choose. The most popular stress busters have included a 10 minute chair massage, word search puzzles on a giant screen, touch screen TV, 
golf putting greens in the aisles of the library. Uh, bowling in the basement using a toy bowling set, guided meditations, and adult coloring pages. Along the lines of decreasing stress that Marie just talked about, we understand that many of our students choose to de-stress in a variety of ways. Yoga may not be their thing, or perhaps coloring pages are just not the type of activity they can get into. Some of our students really enjoy more interactive games, and we're very lucky to have an IT librarian and a help desk manager in our IT department who both really enjoy virtual reality gaming. The two for a couple of years in a row now have graciously offered their personal equipment and their time to set up VR events for a couple of hours during exam weeks as an additional stress buster to allow students to come in and escape with interactive gaming. Some of the games are highly immersive experience that take you underwater, and this can be really calming or into a zombie war. Others are more, in, more creative, like 3D drawings. And still other games like VR Tetris or Spider-Man allow you to play a more standard video game in an interactive way. These events are usually set up in our larger classroom or the large conference room in the next building over. Publicizing them can be difficult though and getting the events out in front of the students is impossible considering that the space they require and the noise they include by design makes it difficult to put it in a high traffic area. And so far, it has cost us zero dollars, only time. Uh, sadly, this is one of the activities that we cannot safely offer during the pandemic. Pre-pandemic, we were providing wipes to clean all of the gear in between uses. And this is another one that we hope to do again when it's safe to do so. On several days throughout the exam period, we work with our Student Bar Association to bring a variety of therapy dogs to the law library foyer. This event is aimed at students and the stress they are under during exams, but faculty and staff also love to come by to pet the therapy dogs. We take lots of pictures and during winter exams, the pups are often dressed up in holiday attire. SBA brands the event Pause and Relax and we advertise with signage and social media which dogs will visit on which days. Even the dean of our law school visited last winter to cuddle the dogs. During the pandemic, we have taken this event virtual with Pet Therapy Zoom when members of the law school community are invited to introduce their pets on Zoom. This has been a great community building opportunity that we plan to continue during our upcoming wellness week. In a similar spirit of the mindfulness and yoga that Sylvia shared, and in the spirit of the pet therapy that Geraldine just talked about, another supplement to our more traditional stress busters just in the last year has been sound baths. This is a natural extension of some of these other areas where instead of requiring you to actually engage in an activity, the goal is to disengage. Um, we have provided some yoga mats for students who have come to these sessions as well. And we dim a very um, large room that is cleared of furniture so that students, faculty, and staff who attend have plenty of room to just lay down on the floor um, and close their eyes with very dim lighting and listen to uh, very relaxing music. Um, this is something, it's another activity that doesn't cost us anything to do. Uh, in the classroom that we have used this in, where we've cleared the room, there's already technology built into the room that we can pipe music through the speakers and even have relaxing videos or visuals on the screen should people choose to open their eyes. Um, these events, uh, although they're very easy to put on and cost very little, are another one that's very difficult to market to students and to get their attention. Um, this is, however, something that we're looking into revamping uh, right now during the pandemic. One of the benefits of it being just a sound bath is that we are able to record audio or deliver a sound bath live in Zoom or other video streaming sessions. Um, without requiring students to be somewhere physically in person. Thank you for attending this poster session. 
Uh, we are all from UGA Law Library. We would all be happy to answer your questions and feel free to find our contact information either on the conference website or on the Law Library's website at law.uga.edu library.